Okay guys, so now we worked on one base pattern which was sit and stand and down. Let's go back and review what our second base pattern is which is just uh, get in heel position and maintain in heel position. Again, we started off with our food. We would just take and let this dog follow our hand around so we would, you know, kind of get it to do this. Good boy, Floyd! And we would turn in little circles and see all oh, this happening here is this dog following my hand around and then when he gets in the right position, I give him a treat. Okay, this stuff is so simple, guys. The reason it doesn't work for you is people just have a tendency to give up a little bit too fast. So once you get that direction going, then you come around and you just start doing it in this direction, you know? And it doesn't work as easy in this direction. So you gotta just be a little bit more patient. But you'll get there, okay? And you do that until the dog, he just, he'll just turn with you in this way and that way and he'll go forward and backwards, okay? And that's pretty neat. All right, but you're not going to get, well, you are going to get a lot of times some real focused attention just using food, but if you have a dog that likes to fetch and he really likes to fetch, you got to bring in that ball or that tug at some point. Okay, now when you do, you're liable to lose a little bit of accuracy, but you're going to gain a lot of enthusiasm. And this is something you just got to knock out. You're going to do 10 minutes on that sit and standing down, maybe do 10 minutes a day on this. But once I break this ball out, if I can find it, then what's going to happen, this guy's going to get excited. You're going to see maybe not quite as accurate a behavior, but it's going to be a, a, a lot happier, okay? So you just start off, and you got your ball, and you're teasing him or you're tugging. You're going, come on, come on, get around here, boy, get around here, boy. And, you know, he's coming around, he's coming around. He gets into position, you pull it up, and you throw it around. Throw it away, okay? Then he's going to get it, and if you're doing your job right, remember, oh, he's a good boy. They'll always come back because they say, hey, Stoney, I like playing, but can I do some more work? Okay? And so if you've done your food work right, he understands how to get into heel position. And it'll look something like this. Floyd, heel. Okay. So he's going to jump over here. And he's going to get a, and he's going to start to start to look up at you. Now, when he starts to look up at you, you're giving him his treats, and that's pretty neat. Okay? Now, some people are taking, they'll put a ball or tug under their arm, or they'll put it under their neck like this, or they'll spit their food at the dog. I really don't care what you're doing, but I just want you to do it every week. Not for very long. Uh, actually, I want you to do it every morning. And so you can put your ball here, you can put your ball here, you can hold your ball in your pocket, you can just use your food, I don't care. But if you have a dog that tug, likes to tug, I'm telling you, that you're going to get a lot better attitude and a lot more fun stuff going on when you start breaking that tug out. So let's see what it's supposed to look like. So I got my dog, he's in heel position, and I uh, just tell him, come on, heel. Good boy, Floyd. And you can talk to him at first. Oh, you're going to get him really excited. Good boy. You know, you're talking, 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 talking. He gets into position, and you throw your ball. Okay? And so you knock that out. You get out of the shower, and you got a ball over there on your sink, and you knock out a few turns. Okay? Come on, Floyd. Let's go the other direction, buddy. And you throw it down the hallway. Or you, maybe you got a little bit extra time. And Floyd, heel. And you go all the way uh, out in the yard or to the dog park before work if you're an overachiever owner. And so once you get that out of the way, then you're going to start going this other way. Boy, heel. Good boy. All the way, all the way. Come on, come on, come on. Good boy, good boy. Get in position, get in position, get in position. Oh, good boy. And you're going to throw the ball for him. And it's going to be real fun. He's going to run off over there and he's going to get it and he's going to come back. Okay? Now it doesn't have to look perfect. We just practice this every once in a while around here. Heel. And when I say every once in a while, I guess we kind of do it every day with these dogs, but it's not our primary focus. But, you know, we figure might as well have a dog that does this. It's kind of flashy. You know, it's kind of fun. And you can be talking to your buddies, and you can turn. Easy way to do is start to turn in 90. So I'm going to turn 90. Heel. Good. I'm going to turn 90. Heel. Good. I'm going to turn 90. Then I'm going to turn 90. Good. And so at first, you, every time you turn that 90, you throw the ball and let him come back. And then you turn to 90 twice and throw the ball and let him come back. Then three times, then four times, you know, that's it. Now you're in a circle. Then you go this other way. Heel. Good. Heel. Good. Heel. Good boy. Heel. Good boy. And, you know, when you get to your fourth turn, you can throw it. Now, once, so you're on a fixed schedule where at first, good boy, get around here. At first, what's going on is the dog's getting some treats. And every time he gets in a position, he gets a treat. And then you start turning 90s and giving him treats. Then you add your ball, and that's where you get all your attitude and your excitement for the exercise. Okay, so it's turn 90, treat. Turn 90, ball. 
and then it turned two 90s, and then three 90s, and four 90s. Once you can go all the way in a circle, then it can complete, be completely just random. Sometimes you give them the ball on the first 90, sometimes you make four or five complete circles. It doesn't even matter, okay? You want to make the game exciting for the dog, he can't know exactly when that reward's coming. So I go heel, good boy. And I go heel, oh, good boy. And I go heel, good. And then heel, Good. I might go back this other way, you know. Now, I'm not being a perfect dog trainer here. You saw me, you know, reach in my pocket. Okay, look, I'm not perfect at this. I'm not trying to be. Good. Heel. Good boy. Okay. And I throw the ball. It's super fun. So you got your sit and your stand and your down. And then you add in a little bit of healing. And when he comes back, you might as well try to get him to get all the way over here in this service heel position. Because, I mean, it's a real convenient thing to do with the dog. All right, let's move on to our next drill. Okay. All right, guys. Now, this is your third uh, drill that I want you to add in for your New Year's resolution. It's just a progressive jumping drill. Out of all the drills we do, we find that progressive jumping drills provide the most collateral benefit. Uh, you know, when you get out with your dog, it's easy to do a little sitting and down in a standing. Good boy, Floyd. It's easy to do a little healing in circles. You know, you can just do that stuff in the morning time before breakfast or when you get home from work. But when you walk your dog, it's easy to fall into a pattern where all you're doing is walking. And that makes these guys kind of bored. Okay? Plus, yeah, it just doesn't do everything they need to do to get good, good, good and strong, you know. So we like progressive jumping drills where each month you're going to ask them to jump a little bit longer, a little bit higher, you know. Turn it into a whole giant pattern. You take them to playgrounds and all kinds of stuff. And so what we do is we're going to try to get the progressive jumping drill to help build trust between me and the dog and to help me learn how to tell the dog that things are a good idea, even if he might not think they're a good idea. And it's going to also develop good proprioception so he really knows where to put his feet, good balance in other words, and it's going to make him strong. It's going to make him strong in his shoulders and strong in his core. And so all I got to do is I got to get him and I take him out and I want to start off getting him a little bit excited, okay, so I might throw the ball with him a couple of times, but when I actually go to working on jumping, until I've got that perfect, I don't use the ball or the tug. Okay, and the reason being is I, I use the food and I stroke them a lot because I want them to be calm and stay safe until they get their balance right, until they really know where to put their feet. So I'm going to throw this ball for Floyd so he can run and get it, and I'm going to grab a block and slide over here, and then we'll get started. Okay, Floyd. So I've just got old cinder block over here, and I'm going to pull it up here. Oh, and I'm going to put it right about here so you can see it. Oh, and I got my dog. Oh, he went and got a ball for me. Now, remember, if you're doing these things right, okay, the dog, he loves to work, so when, you know, you throw the ball, he should come right back over here. Boy, heel, good boy. I get him in position, stay. Okay, now I'm going to put this ball away for a second. And I'm going to use my food, and I'm going to ask him to get up here on this block. Okay, now see how he hopped right up here on that block, and he's happy. Now, it's a good thing he's first started getting him to jump, have him jump on something and wait. You know, let them get in the habit of balancing. Now, this cinder block's nice and stable, but we gradually introduce more and more unstable things, and so I really like for that dog to take a second and test his footing. And again, I add time and distance. Stay. Good boy. Then I'm going to come back. Okay, Floyd, good boy. And I'm going to come back over here. Floyd, heel. Sit. Stay. And I'm just going to add, uh, you know, another couple of blocks to make the drill harder. Good boy. You might want to remind him here to stay still. Get your extra block. Come over here and stay. And at this point, he should be pretty much knowing he's going to jump up here, but I'm going to kind of use a sweeping hand motion and I'm going to say hup right before I do it. So, boy, hup. Good boy. Gets up there and then stay. Okay, and again, I'm going to let him test that out. Make sure he puts his feet in the proper place. And if I want to reward him, I'm going to come back and I'm going to give him a treat. Or I'm going to come back and I'm going to stroke him so that he stays calm. Don't get him too excited when you first start doing progressive jumping drills. You know, because you really want him to be safe. Good boy. I'll get him down. Come on, Floyd. And I'm going to come back to the starting point. Sit. Good. And give him a little treat. Stay. Keep him, keep him kind of, you know, kind of, kind of calm there. Remember, your food is great for teaching, and the ball is great for motivating, uh, and, and, and getting, you know, figuring out how to use the two is, is an art, you know? Okay, so I'm going to bring this old barrel up here, and the barrel is going to be harder for the dog to jump on because it's kind of shaky, you know? And so when the dog first gets up there, he says, well, I don't know if I trust this, and in my opinion, I should get down. But see, I don't want the dog to worry about his opinion. I want him to worry about my opinion. 
okay? And that's where this idea of progression comes in. He's progressively turning over control to me because he trusts me more, okay? And this is really, really important. Okay, Floyd, hop, 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 hop. Good boy, hop, good boy, stay. Good boy. Now I get him up on that barrel, and I know that that barrel is a hard place to be. It's a little bit shaky. It's a little bit different texture, you know, uh, but he trusts me. And so I might come back, you know, because I'm adding time and distance here. I might come back with the treat. Good boy. Now, once your dog gets to where, you know, he really understands what's going on, and he's got, he's got, he's got good, strong, good, he, you know, he's, he's an adult dog or young adult dog. He's got good, strong bones. He's got good, strong muscles. Good boy. Okay, Floyd, come on, buddy. Uh, then you can start to add in this ball a little bit, you know, and you can ask them to do it when they're real excited, but you have to have the control first. Okay, Floyd, hop. Good boy, stay. Good boy. And now once you add in that ball, uh, then the whole world's open. You can get lots of other things. You can even, when he's jumped up there, you can start to move your other base patterns into the deal. Floyd, lay down. Good boy. All the way down. Down. Good boy. If they're a little hesitant, that's okay because remember, you're trying to build trust. And you know it's hard for him to trust you to be up on that steel barrel. Floyd, stand. Good boy. Floyd, sit. Oh, good boy. And if he does a good job, oh, then you can come over here. Okay, Floyd, come here. Good boy. Move him down, move him down, and then there goes this ball. Okay? So see, I get him up there with excitement, but then I try to calm him down because I don't want him going too crazy. All right? Especially when he's on unstable things. Now, good boy. If I did my work right, he'll come right back up here to where we started, okay, because he understands that coming back to work is what leads to the play. Okay, now remember, I come back to this all the time. I come back to this because I really want that dog to want to work. If he doesn't want to work, you're doing it wrong. Okay, so now that's the basis of doing a progressive jumping drill. Now let's go over here and I'll show you something that you can run into a lot, like on playgrounds and stuff, uh, and it's super fun for the dog and it's super fun for people to watch. Okay, come